All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, we, we looked at this example earlier, the, the natural logarithm. We, we use this degree six Taylor polynomial to approximate the values of, you know, so we did this for the natural log of 1.5, and we did it for the natural log of two. And we found that the approximation was not too bad for 1.5. Uh, it wasn't very good at all for the natural log of two, right? Um, so now we want to kind of look into this remainder and try to understand what's going on. So if we were to calculate the seventh derivative of x, you would find that you get minus six factorial over x to the seven. Okay, and if we want to center at one, right? We probably want to use, we need an interval that contains the center and it needs to contain the point that we want to evaluate. So maybe we move like 0.1 either side, right? Uh, so maybe we go like 0 0.9 to 1.6, right? And you could, you know, in, in, in effect, if you wanted to, you could probably go with the interval from 1 to 1 1.5 because this value of t in the remainder formula that you get um, from Taylor's theorem, generally it's safe to assume that it's somewhere in between these two values, so somewhere between 1 and 1.5. Uh, but uh, let's go with 0 0.9, let's see where that gets us, right? Let's, let's like I said, you know, if, if we get an error estimate that's too big, that's all right. That just means we're being a little bit more conservative, right? Uh, that's better than then trying to come up with an error estimate that's smaller, so you make yourself look good, but then it turns out that maybe you went a bit too small and your error estimate is not actually uh, as accurate as you thought. Okay, so if we, uh, if we use this interval and we want the maximum of the absolute value of the seventh derivative for, for t, in this interval, let's call it i, right? We say, well, I want to make this thing as big as possible for t in this interval. And, well, x is in the denominator, right? So if we, if we have some reciprocal power of x and we want to make this thing big, we should take x as small as possible. Uh, that means we should take x to be 0 0.9, all right? We're taking absolute values, so we lose the minus sign. So we have 6 factorial over 0 0.9 uh, to the 7. And if you put that through your calculator, you find that this comes out to be about uh, 1506, okay? All right. If you, um, if you decided that you wanted to do just t equals 1, right? If we went from 1 to 1 1.5, um, you'd get 720, which is 6 factorial, right? So our estimate here is about twice as big, right? You think 0 0.9 is pretty close to 1, right? But once you raise it to a high enough power, it definitely has an effect. Okay, so we have this, this maximum. And so now we know that um, if, we're, if we're interested in the error, right, our error is going to be, well, it's going to be given by the remainder at 1.5. And we want the absolute value. So we take the absolute value. And that remainder is going to be less than or equal to. So we have this maximum here. And we've just worked out that you know the biggest that we can get on the interval we've chosen is 1506. We divide by 7 factorial, and we should actually put in this R6, right? R6. So for n equal to 6, we divide by 7 factorial. Okay. And then x minus c. c is 1. x is 1.5. 1 1.5 1 .5 minus 1 gives us 0 0.5, or 1 half, raised to the seventh power, right? So. That 0 0.5 to the seventh power, that's going to help make sure the error is not too big here, right? Because, you know, that's, that's 1 over 2 to the seventh. That's 
getting to a reasonably small number. That's a one over a thousand, right? Um, so we get to here, and again, you can punch this into your calculator. Um, by the way, for when you're doing these error estimates, it's nice to have a, you know, a decent calculator or even a spreadsheet handy to run the numbers. Right? Often, in, in some situations, you're plugging in various values of n to figure out which one works. And so it's, it's nice to be able to just generate them all and use a spreadsheet, something like that. So if you punch this through, you get that this is something like 0 0.0023, right? Um, and so what that tells you is that the estimate you get for the natural log of 1.5, right? Because the error is, is less than 5 in this spot, you know that you're good to two decimal places, right? Because whatever value you got, you know, you get up to the second decimal place. In the third decimal place, you're off by, you know, plus or minus 0.2. Um, up to rounding, that's not enough to shift what you've got in the second decimal place. So you're, you're fairly happy with that, right? Now, if we had gone with the natural log of 2 instead, right? So then maybe we're going with 0 0.9 up to maybe 2.1, something like that. Um, well, actually, the only thing that changes The minimum is still going to be down here at zero, or the maximum value is still going to be down here at 0 0.9, right? So you're still going to have that, that 1506 over 7 factorial there. Um, but now your x minus c is going to be 2 minus 1. It's 1 to the seventh power, right? And, and so that, that, this doesn't contribute, right? It's just 1 to the seventh. So that's not going to help shrink the remainder. The only thing that really helps shrink the remainder here is that 7 factorial. Right. And you can see that this is, this is not going to be very good at all, right? So 7 factorial is, is what, like, um, so 7 times 7 is around 5,000, right? Um, so, so this is, yeah, this is around 1,500 over 5,000, something like that, right? Um, so it's less than 1, but it's, it's bigger than 0 0.1, so it's... it's it's not as good, right? It's, it's certainly not as good anymore. Um, I guess it's 3,000 over, over 10,000. So, uh, you know, so somewhere around 0 0.3, right? Which tells you that your answer is you don't necessarily even have the first decimal place, right? You've, you've got the ones digit okay, but that's about it. Um, so, so here's where you can, you can see that this is, this is not going to help, right? And roughly, roughly, if you kind of play around with this, if you think of where this came from, right? If you go to a higher degree, what you're going to have is, is the remainder is going to be more or less that, you know, that 0 0.9 factor, if, if you want, um, right? You can creep closer to 1 if you want to kind of get it a bit better. But, but then even, 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 if you went with, even if you went with 1, with, with t equal to 1, your best case is going to be still uh, n factorial over n plus 1 factorial, which is, which is 1 over n plus 1, right? Um, so that, that tells you that, you know, to get even the first decimal place, you're going to need like 10 terms. To get the second decimal place, you're going to need like 100 terms, right? Three decimal places, you're going to need like 1,000 terms. Um, so if you're trying to approximate, you know, log of 2, this is probably not how you want to do it.